coming up in today's video. I take the ATN Excite out for its first outing to a cattle farm and we get some daytime footage of both rats of the furry kind and of the feathery kind. Plus, I bring to you brand new to the channel, new to you, channels to look out for on YouTube. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is quite interesting, we've got something very different. I've had a call from a farmer to say that this grain store that's been, or had the floor uh, taken out of it, <clears throat> and it actually had cattle feed in it, not grain, uh, but they've taken the floor up and this place is humping with rats. He's just walked me around this building here and there's plenty of rats running around in broad daylight. So I've come here in the day to see if we can account for a couple. Now today, I'm also christening the ATN Excite 4K Pro. So this is the first time I've actually shot this scope in anger. I can't wait to see how we get on. Enjoy the video and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Having already been out and sighted the rifle in previously at 20 yards, that's the distance I sat at from where the rats were coming in. They were coming in through this door actually as a hole. There you are, just to the bottom right hand corner of that door the rats are coming out of there running straight in to the corner of the building most of them unfortunately they were running straight into these holes um, so there's some spilt feed there so I tried to get a couple of them squeaking uh, to come out but it wasn't going to work so I decided I was going to have to change tactics fairly early on So with most of the rats seemingly disappearing into the tunnel, I decided that getting myself in there would be the best bet of bagging myself a few scaly tails. Trouble is with my rifle being about 20 foot long, it wasn't too easy to actually squeeze in there. But I certainly got in there, uh, got the IR on, got the ATN flicked over into night mode, and this is what we found. So having not got the rangefinder fitted to the ATN scope yet, I'm still guessing ranges here. So I gave that one a little bit of holdover, thinking that my pellet would be travelling up towards my zero point. But I think I misjudged it slightly, so I had to give that one a second pellet just to finish it off. The second one though, were, which was actually at the back of the tunnel here, was a little bit better. Well, I've had to change tactics slightly. Um, the rats were coming in from the bottom door really quickly and going straight into this tunnel. So I snuck round here, had a little look in the tunnel, and sure enough, I don't know how many there were in there, probably six or seven at least. Anyway, we've got the first couple down, and we've got the first blood to the ATN Excite. I'm still finding my way around the Excite, but uh, and I don't as of yet have the rangefinder. There is actually a rangefinder you can buy for it that as soon as you ping the target automatically adjusts the crosshair for you. This is the rangefinder in question, it's the ABL. Uh, this is fitted to Carl's rifle who featured in last week's uh, ratting video. But I think patience is going to be the aim of this game but I'm going to stick it out in the tunnel here. It's not the most comfortable shooting position nevertheless it's still good to be out. As you can see, for this many rats to be out in daytime, there's obviously quite a problem, and that's why we're here. Still to come in this episode, I find where all the rats seem to be hanging out anyway, near the cattle feed, and we take some of the feral pigeons out at the farmer's request. Back inside the tunnel, ten minutes later, and we've got a few more rats to go at. This time round, I'm a little bit more confident with my shot placements though, and the rat numbers start to fall, and the tally starts to rise.
I'm sure you're all familiar with the rifle I'm using by now, but the IR torch on top is actually the Ode Pro KL52 that uh, also featured a couple of episodes back, but that can be found in the Amazon shop. I'll put a link to that in the video's description. Another good example of hold over there, having to shoot slightly above the target because the distance to it was a lot closer than my zero point. At this stage it had gone pretty quiet in the tunnel, so I thought I'd get picked up with the rats I'd got so far, leave them in one place so that uh, we could get a picture of them for the landowner a little later on. Well things have gone a little quiet in the tunnel, I've picked up what I've had so far and we're into double digits but the farmer's asked if we can also thin out a few of these feral pigeons. Uh, he's just come and fed the cattle, uh, so I'm going to get myself in the, uh, in the bullock pen. Luckily that's just been picked up as well. Um, so I'm going to get myself in the bullock pen. There are a couple of rats underneath the feed that's just gone in, and plenty of feral pigeons I can see at the minute swooping in and getting into that feed. So let's get in there and see if we can take out a few of those with the ATN as well. Out and around the openness of the farm buildings, I hadn't quite accounted for a very stiff left to right breeze. So as you can see, that first pigeon there got away with a shoulder shave. So for the next one, I held over an inch or two to the left and it found its mark perfectly and dropped it like a stone. Walking cautiously to where the feed troughs were paid dividends as I changed my angles, pigeons appeared on beams that were otherwise obscured the first time round. You can't quite see this one on the camera angle here because it's quite dark on the internal part of the shed, but through the scope I had a clear view of this pigeon sitting pretty there for a broadside strike.
as I first peered over the gate, I could see plenty of rat activity. I didn't want to disturb them too much, so I tried to peer through a gap. Uh, the trouble is it was only a couple of inches wide, so it gave me very little movement in terms of left to right ability. I did manage to get one though, as you can see through this little gap here. The gate was too tall to simply shoot over it, and that little gap didn't give me enough lateral movement to effectively be able to take shots. So there was only one thing for it. I was going to have to open this gate as gingerly as I could to see if that would give me better angles. Even with the afternoon sun directly behind me and my movement didn't seem to put them off from feeding too much. As I take the first rat here, he gives what can only be described as a goalkeeper style dive to the left. Quite comical really. Shielded by the tall pen, a couple of the pigeons came down for a feed and I was able to take the waiting ones down on the roof. Unfortunately though, we've got one or two still up there. And this is why we are doing what we are doing, protecting these young fellas. Clearly the rats um, pose all manner of health risks, not just to the animals but also to the farm workers as well. And clearly the pigeons are also defecating in the feed troughs, so they've got to go too. Much like the previous rat with the spine shot, this one gave a funny kind of pose as it died as well. Okay, no more messing about, I promise. It's serious pest control from here on in. As you can see, daytime rats, some will give you all the time in the world to take the shot, others, not so much. Yes, I know, I forgot to hold over for the wind again. Although this one was a lot closer, so I didn't think I needed to hold over much for this one.
this one was pretty close and when it turned to run towards me at first I thought it was going to run right at my legs but I managed to get rid of it this really has turned out to be a very productive spot. I don't remember the last time I had this many rats during daylight hours. But that's the beauty of the ATN scope. Day or night, really easy to flick between the two. But this has been real busy. The floor is littered with carcasses. And we've got several feral pigeons down which have been defecating in the feed trough here so the farmer would be really pleased that we've got rid of those for him and then the spilt animal feed has um, gone onto the floor from where the cows were eating earlier has attracted the rats from the dike behind the gate here and there has been a good steady stream of activity up till now so it's gone a little quiet so I'm going to give it a few more minutes here pick up what we've had but for the first outing I'm seriously impressed with this scope right let's crack on Eventually that area itself also went quiet so as I go back to go and get the sticks that I'd left near the chair in the original location I heard a noise on the rafter above and sure enough there was another feral pigeon at the other end of the building and that one met the same fate as the rest. It's almost 30 yards I would expect here. So as I get picked up and ready to draw this session to a close, don't forget, don't go anywhere, because I've still got a new segment new to you to bring. Well, it's getting late enough in the day to bring this session to a close. The farmer's just turned up uh, to put fresh bedding down and uh, do whatever else the farmers do. Um, but I think it's been a very productive session. I was certainly very impressed with the ATN scope, and it didn't take very long at all for me um, to find a sweet spot in terms of distances in this tunnel um, here in this, uh, in this feed store. I picked up 19 rats, uh, I definitely shot a couple more and I lost a few in the depths of the tunnel um, and probably behind the trough of the feed area and then I've managed to pick up nine of the ferals uh, that we also took out for the farmer. There are one or two on the roof but we'll leave those for the buzzards. This lot are going on the muck heap uh, behind us here uh, and eventually we'll get burned. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you're stopping by for the first time and you want to, please subscribe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, it also helps. Just before we head off, time for a new segment here on the channel, new to you. 
channels you should be looking at perhaps on YouTube if you're into my channel and the types of content that we bring. The first of which is Target Breaker, a chap called Adam brings us this channel. It's a collection of shooting trips as well as some good review videos. I personally like this one here featuring the Pard 008. So go ahead and check out the first channel, that's Target Breaker. Next up is an ultra brand new channel. This one is called Viper Pest Control. Only the one video at the moment, but this chap shooting the Brocock and also using the ATN uh, Excite 4K Pro combination here for some squirrel action you know who doesn't love a little bit of squirrel action uh, and i certainly can't wait to get out on the greys myself and use this scope but please go ahead and check out viper pest control and last but by no means certainly least pontypool pest control this is not a new channel and i've actually got quite a good back catalogue of videos here but i really am a big fan of the latest episode which is some daytime ratting footage uh, shot here uh, it's well put together it's got some great shots on it uh, here and a very entertaining video certainly if you like the type of video that you've just watched from myself so go ahead over and check out pontypool pest control I'll put a link to all of these channels in this video's description and if you have a channel that you would like me to feature then please get in contact again, details are in this video's description. Well, thank you very much for watching, take care, stay safe and as always, happy shooting.